Hello. Good morning. Hey, Katrina. Hello, hello, good morning. So welcome everyone. This is coffee and cosmos. So I got my coffee and we are going to start talking about the astro energy that's happening today. And then since we have such like a huge week, we might even dive into talking about this full moon that's happening on Thursday. And if, uh, speaking of the full moon, if you have not already registered for my full moon ceremony collaboration with the Trauma Conscious Yoga Institute that's happening on the full moon, please do so by clicking the link in my bio. Um, yeah, so more information coming on that pretty soon. But what is Coffee in Cosmos? For those of you who are just now joining me and have not seen this or joined any of these lives, Every Monday, we meet at 10.30 Central Standard Time in the morning for some coffee and Cosmo talk. So we sip our coffee, our tea, your wake and bake, however you wake up. And we talk about the astrology and what's happening right now and, and the energy and what that feels like. And um, last week, we did it by your rising sign. So... Whatever energy was going on last week, we looked at the charts and talked about like where this is aspecting, you know, the person in their um, chart. And then you can feel free to donate. You can buy me a coffee. That link is in my bio. Also, I will um, keep a tag of my Cash App and Venmo here. I'm going to put that in there now. And yeah, I will also have the astro dice so if you need me to roll you some dice and yeah so we're going to get started in a little bit i'm going to tag my venmo and pin it up here i'm trying to find a little thing post that Good morning, CB. Good morning. So y'all know we have a big week, right? So we have this full moon. And we have Mercury st uh, station in retrograde this week in Aquarius. And we have um, like all this other energy that's just, that's been here with the squares to... Um, hey, Akila, we have the squares to all this uh, uh, Aquarius energy from Mars and all that. So, I mean, we got some stuff to talk about. Let me put my cash app on here. So how are y'all doing? How was y'all's weekend? Hello, hello. Hey, Rocky. Okay, so I hope y'all are ready. What are we going to talk about today? All right, we have today the sun is coming into a close conjunction um, with Jupiter. The sun is at five degrees and then we have um saturn at four degrees in the sign of aquarius so this kind of like feeling like some limitations on really just being yourself projecting yourself okay beautiful mad rest i'm good like this weekend was really good i finally got 
um, out a little bit, but safely. I was able to go out and get some food. <laughs> I have Venus and Taurus, and I have a Taurus rising, so food is life. Um, Rocky slept in both days. You ready for some sun, girl? Me too. We need to go on a hike. Um, but yeah, so this energy with the sun and Aquarius, and it's making this conjunction to um, Saturn and Aquarius, is like you feel limited with connecting with people, connecting with your community, your environment. You know, large organizations is going to be more restrictions on that. And with a Saturn conjunct the sun, the sun is our life force, right? That's like our vitality. So when Saturn is there in a conjunction, it can bring on like some depressive energy you could just feel real kind of like sluggish and down I know it was hard for me to kind of wake up this morning it was very slow like I already am not really a morning person so yeah it was very very slow moving for me this morning and I still feel a little you know so hello goddess um yeah so you could feel that today and it's making a square to Mars. So it's going to be like some some real live lazy energy. Like you just cannot get it going. And that's going to be what we're dealing with today. But um, that as well as having all of that Aquarius energy sextiling uh, Chiron and Aries. So you, you're, you might even like experience some self-identity things like, oh, I'm lazy. Or I need to get up and do this. Or even um how you have been identifying with your physical body like you want to work out but you can't work out because you feel really down that might be a thing today um because chiron and aries is about your identity your self-image and the wounding and healing those wounds regard or surrounding how you have identified with yourself so that in connection with um this saturn conjunct the sun energy might bring on like, okay, I'm just not feeling myself today. <laughs> All of that. You might want to work out, but you can't. Um, that might be a thing that come up. So, I mean, it could be a few things with that. Also, it could br really bring like a manifestation of you healing some identity wounds that you've had, that you've had to like deal with. And you could be getting over and, and working through that. So, yeah, anybody having any of those experiences this morning? Because I know I woke up like, I slept well. That's the good thing about that Saturn energy. You're going to sleep well, but you're going to want to sleep all day. So you might feel that all day where you just cannot get stuff done. Or it's going to be really hard to get something done. Yeah, okay. Yeah, me too. Nature's Daughter. Yep, okay. Me too. So, um, so, I want to talk about this moon that's happening on the 28th, right? So, we have this full moon in Leo. Like, a full moon is... Full moons are already dramatic. What'd you say, Rock? Okay, Katrina said, yes, I slept most of the day yesterday, see? And then Rocky said, I was just going to force myself to work out so I can get back on the roll. Is that okay? Yeah, you can push yourself. That's that Mars and Taurus being ambitious, you know, wanting to go. Akilah said, I did not want to get out of the bed like it was so comfy, right? It's like something about this energy. <laughs> hey, CB. Okay, yeah, you are um, a Leo. Oh, wow. Yeah, so look, let's talk about this moon. Okay, so this moon is probably going to be aspecting your sun. So um, this is interesting. So on Thursday, let me plug this really quick. On Thursday, I have a full moon um, healing circle that's happening. And it's a collaboration with the Trauma Conscious Yoga Institute. And so I'm going to be tying in the astrology. And then Natita Gassel, who is the founder of... Um, trauma conscious she will be using her somatic therapy as well as her her uh, trauma informed yoga um, training and she's she's amazing if y'all have not checked out her site go ahead and check out but she uses trauma informed yoga in connection with somatic therapy so she's going to be using some slow flow, uh, flow yoga as well as some restorative yoga on that day and we're going to be talking about the moon and all that kind of stuff so 
very healing. Um, and we're going to be really tapping into that sacral chakra energy because that's the chakra that Leo governs. So check that out. Hit the link in my bio. Tickets are still on sale until the day of the event. So yeah, but anywho, back to this moon. This moon is in Leo. So full moons are already dramatic as is, right? But not only are we having just a full moon, we having a full moon in Leo. Hey, Journey. So Leos are so, you know, over the top and bold and just all about the fullest of expressions that there is. And so when you have this full moon, right, not to mention that this full moon is so uh disruptive because it's making a t-square aspect to so it's the sun the moon and then to mars and uranus in a conjunction so uranus brings like unexpected uh changes and unexpected events things you weren't even like trying or even like thought that was going to happen like stuff just shake up uranus is in taurus so this could be about uh, some kind of like value, something that's going to shake up, you know, how you feel. Because Taurus is all about the pleasure senses. It's also about our finances. It's our money. It's our partnership. So something that could be shaken up in those areas, but also coming by way of like a large organization or a group of people, someone that you network with, your friends, because that's Aquarius energy too. And it's your expression within all of that. And then like it also depends on where this is happening in your chart as well so like it could be like your, your creativity feeling like the need to like break free and uh shake some things up like like i don't want to feel this way anymore i don't want to experience this i'm ready to get out i'm ready to do this and do that so it could come through many different ways depending on how it's aspecting in your chart but it's going to be very dramatic people are going to be over the top of their expression um just really doing the absolute most you know so just be careful with this you know full moons bring the wolves out anyway so y'all just <laughs> i suggest that you just chill you know on this day and focus inward and also full moons are about releasing right so full moons are about you know letting things go taking in what has worked over the last you know lunar cycle and releasing what has not so what are we releasing during this full moon yeah so i do want to talk about that and if y'all want me to roll y'all some astro dice i can do that i have my dice here hey babe i see you online um Y'all want me to uh, roll y'all some dice? Let me know. Um, I have my Venmo and my Cash App linked here. So if you want me to roll some dice. Or you can hit the link in my bio and buy me a coffee. Because I need my coffee to keep myself going. So, yeah. But I just know, like, oh, and then not to mention, right after <laughs> this full moon, we have crazy-ass Mercury going retrograde in Aquarius. You know, it's going retrograde in the sign of the genius. So, I mean, this is going to be decent energy depending, you know, how it's aspected and also depending on how things have been going with you individually. But um, on the 30th, Mercury goes retrograde. So, y'all already know when Mercury goes retrograde, y'all heard all the, the stigma behind Mercury retrogrades. Um, things resurface itself. Um, also, it could be miscommunications in uh several different right, uh, ways okay cb i got you um but like the miscommunication the the chance to like send the text message to the wrong person um issues with vehicles that could be a thing um during mercury retrograde you see a lot of car accidents because people you know mercury rules our nervous system and also rules the brain and how we perceive things so people aren't really focused as how like not how they normally are so yeah you see a lot of car accidents you see anything that deals with communication tra travel um also education like lower level education i wouldn't be surprised that if something happens like uh within the virtual learning because aquarius rules technology and mercury rules social media and also it rules communication of all forms so i wouldn't be surprised if something happened for you, all you teachers just you know 
I believe it's uh, until February 20th. From January the 30th through February 20th, we have Mercury retrograde. So keep that in mind. Technology and communication may go haywire a little bit. So, all right, let's see, CB. I got your dice. I got your dice. And this time, they're not going to roll all over the place because I'm sitting on the floor. All right, so you have Pluto in Sagittarius in the 10th house. So there's a need for you to transform this career. Go ahead and release whatever it is. Release the, um, it's something that you have not been having fun with. So you need to release the, um, the power struggles within this career path that you're trying to go down. There's something that, and also it could be like your public image or your reputation. Like, um, like there's something that you have not been enjoying and there's a need for you to tap into the fun, um, the adventure side of these things. So release the power struggle. You're going back and forth. It's probably something in your mind because Sagittarius is consciousness. So you're going back and forth with something in your mind that you need to release. And that's going to help you tap into that side of adventure and wonder and feeling good with exploring this new avenue and it could be within like your reputation your your public image your most definitely this is about your career or business so yeah it could be any of those things so okay Katrina I got you let me know CB if that resonates oh CB guess what you remember when you hopped on and we were like, oh, um, CB, we thought this was Chris Brennan, the, the astrologer. And we're like, oh, that would be really cool if he was actually on here and if he was actually following me. Tell me why yesterday he started following me, like in real life on Twitter. <laughs> you see how things are working? I was like, whoa. It resonates? Okay, cool. Um... All right, so I have Katrina, then I have Aquila. All right, Katrina, I'm rolling yours. I know that's lit, right? Okay. All right, Katrina, you have Saturn in Sagittarius in the second house. Okay, so there is a need for you to build some kind of structure or um, a routine, some discipline within finances, partnership, and your business that you need to balance and and tap into because everybody's getting this Sagittarius energy like being sovereign being um being your own person you know doing it your way but finding a balance and discipline and orderly way of doing these things so this is finances small business and partnership maybe there's a need for you to connect with someone and partner with someone on a new adventure uh, a new business endeavor but this uh, this has something to do with um, getting some discipline within these areas and balancing them, and still being. And once you do that, then that's when you would feel that that fun and that adventure. You know that really true sense of adventure. So, what is it that you you need a schedule? Is this what this is? Is it a schedule or is it a a new partnership? Maybe a contract that you need to sign with something. Your hairstylist, yeah, okay. Well, there you go. Get the structure. Mm. Okay. Okay, so get a get an idea, get a plan, and get a plan together. So get a plan and find the balance, and then it'll be fun. Right now, it's a, a need for work. And he's horrible with schedule too. Oh, well, uh, good luck. <laughs> I know you, Gemini. Okay, so I'm going to move on to Aquila. All right, Aquila. Just thinking of doing this. All right, we'll connect later because I might need you anyway for business too. So we'll talk. All right, Aquila. What you got? Okay. You have... Mm, you have Neptune in Libra in the 12th house. 
this is a need to balance the illusions or there's uh, something spiritual because 12th house and Neptune are, that's like it's ruling, it's ruling sign, right? So, um, hey Mel, hey Harp, Harpsichord. So Neptune in the 12th house. So this is definitely your spirituality. This is definitely you needing to um, tap into those subconscious beliefs and develops this spiritual routine there's also oh this is something about your spiritual health finding the balance in that being very diplomatic is there someone that you're supposed to connect with in a spiritual there's like a spiritual uh connection that's supposed to happen and it's something that needs to be cleared out subconsciously first and then there's like this order, kind of like this ebb and flow, like letting things kind of flow. And I'm also getting that you need to continue on your spiritual, um, like you have like this daily ritual that you're doing. There's a need for you to tap into that and to, and build this spiritual routine, the spiritual, like a ritual that you have. There's a partnership, a spiritual partnership that's supposed to happen, something creative. I don't know if you're trying to do something. This is a, also business. This is a contract. This is a partnership. But it's spiritual. This is all spiritual. Pisces, 12th house, spiritual. What is that? Your ancestors. You've been connecting? Mm. Okay. Have you been... Um, You know, PETA, she can help you with that if you haven't already reached out to her. Okay. Your ancestor altar, have you been doing that every day? Have you been going to your altar, praying, doing those things? Because that might it might be them actually saying that you need to connect more or that there's a message for you and that there needs to be like a daily routine of this every day. And there's like some kind of spiritual connection that needs to happen. I do know that. So there's a partnership also too. Like I said, there's a connection happening because Libra is about contracts. Libra is about partnerships, not only in marriage, but partnerships in business, partnerships with your friendships. So there's something happening here. There's a spiritual connection that needs to happen. I think like you, how you have been going to your ancestors, like they have the answers for you. It will come to you. And there's going to be, oh, something about your dreams. What you've been dreaming about? You've probably been having like these deep dreams. So pay attention to your dreams because the 12th house is the house of dreams as well. So pay attention to your dreams. The answers are in your dreams. All right. Good. All right. Anybody else want me to roll the dice for you? Anybody else? You're welcome, Akila. So I do want to tell y'all again about this full moon on Thursday. Look, people going to be, I wish I could show y'all the um, chart, but there's like this big red triangle that's happening in the chart. And that's a T-square. T-squares bring a lot of tension, a lot of aggression. Um, it's just wild ass energy. So <laughs> please, let's not, let's not. You're welcome, Katrina. Um, yeah, let's just not overreact on certain things. Because that's been the energy for January. I've been speaking about this in Galactic Gossip and in my weeklies and in my newsletter, if y'all follow me. Also, in my Facebook group. Um, it's just been really hectic energy for January. February is not as bad as January. But February is not going to let up off our necks either. Roll you, Mel. All right, bet. Um... But March, April, and May, magical months. Like, the best months of the entire year. Really dope months. March, April, and May. But we got to get through January and February first. We're almost done with January, funky ass. Now, here we go with February. So, yeah. Your mama been popping up in your dreams. All right. That's what it is, Akila. You can hit me up afterwards. All right, Mel. Here we go. 
All right, girl, I already know what this is. <laughs> you have Jupiter and Gemini <laughs> in your 10th house. <laughs> Oh, God, I need to expand your influence and the way you relate to people through your career and your public image. So, um, also, something that you need to learn, maybe you're going to enroll into a class, like a business course, or maybe you're even going to teach someone. There might be some opportunity for you to travel somewhere, maybe a short distance travel, or even if it's not like an actual physical travel, then maybe it's you expanding over the internet because Gemini rules social media. So this is about your career. This is about your public image. This is also about your influence and you just won influencer of the year. So by the way, y'all congratulate Mel on that. Oh, <laughs> cause I be knowing, cause y'all know I get downloads. These here are just confirmation. Like I be hearing it before I be seeing it. Like I already know what this is, but yeah. Mel, you, my dear, um, I'm not sure what it is that you're doing. Maybe there's a new program that you're implementing. There's a need to expand on it. There's a need to um, tap into that that fun, joy, um, all of that. Yeah, y'all give a shout out to Mel. She just won that. That was amazing. That was on Saturday. She won Influencer of the Year. So her influence is really big, y'all. It's really, she at you. If y'all not following her, go follow her um, at Grow Your Love Space. Go ahead and plug yourself, Mel. Um, but yeah, so go ahead and focus on, maybe you're developing a course and you're not telling nobody, but there's a need to release it. I will wait until after March, of course, because I've been saying that. Don't do anything new. Don't release anything new till after March. But um, yeah. Whatever this is, it could also be a connection because Gemini is like social media and it's small business. So it could just be telling you that your business is about to take off because Jupiter is like abundance, right? It's, it's also opportunity. So there could be an opportunity for your business that's going to come out. Oh, yeah. Release that album. <laughs> Get a CB. Let her know. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what I got. Anywho, anybody else? Anybody else? Do I have anybody else? I'm going to um, end it with a little bit of meditation sounds. If no one else wants me to roll dice. I already know I'm right. You see my face. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Y'all are very welcome. Thank y'all for tuning in. I know Mondays are like, and this is a challenge for me because I don't like Mondays, right? And then you're welcome, Akila. And I don't like mornings, so. That's two against me already. So this is all love. <laughs> this is a challenge. All right. So if we are done and I'm going to end us with some sounds from the beautiful sound bowl that was gifted to me by my love, Mr. Bearfield. Okay. If everyone can, if y'all are not in a comfortable position, go ahead and get in a comfortable position. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. Hold it for three and release for four. All right. Y'all go have a wonderful week. <laughs>